The Sandlot captures a moment in many boys' lives in which love for a sport or game, in this case baseball, is paramount. But as an adult and rewatching the movie, it also effectively captures how special and important a group of friends can be while growing up. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back in 1993's The Sandlot. The Sandlot was co-written and directed by David Mickey Evans. He also narrates the movie as Scott Smalls, telling in flashback the summer of 1962 when he, his mother, and his stepfather moved to a San Fernando Valley neighborhood. Once there, not only does Smalls have a relationship struggle with his stepfather, who seems mostly uninterested in helping Smalls' inability to catch and throw a baseball, but also struggles as a consequence to be accepted by the local group of neighborhood kids after being invited to play baseball by their leader of sorts and natural at the game, Benny Rodriguez. The boys literally laugh him, his cheap plastic-like glove, oversized hat, and lack of skills right off the field in humiliating shame. Small's situation resonates and is relatable to any guy who has moved into a new town and felt isolated, not having any friends, and or was not very good at the sport the kids were playing, and struggled to fit in or be accepted as a result. The same applies to a struggle with or there being uncomfortable tension with a family member, but fortunately there is at least that one friend a number of kids who likewise had or wish they had, in this case Benny Rodriguez, who's willing to see the actual person behind the awkwardness, shyness, or lack of talent, and give a chance. For Smalls, this chance and guidance from Rodriguez helps him eventually become skillful enough to play baseball with the other boys, but also opens the gates to a friendship with the entire team. The rest of the movie then focuses on their relationships, ventures, and hijinks as a group, such as showing their desire to be like big leaguers and chew tobacco, but unwisely doing so on spinning carnival rides and barfing it out as a result or their running fear of the quote beast, which supposedly eats their baseballs after being hit over the sandlot's fence and into the neighbor's yard, though the beast is actually just a figment of their naive imagination and turns out to be nothing more than a big friendly dog. Its owner, Mr. Myrtle, likewise turns out to be a kind man who gets them out of what the adult Smalls calls the biggest pickle he ever got himself into by replacing the Babe Ruth signed baseball, Smalls naively and ignorant of its significance takes from his stepdad's office just so the boys could have a ball to play with. Mr. Myrtle, a former player who went blind by being hit with a baseball, gives Smalls a ball signed by the entire 1927 New York Yankees, which ultimately and ironically ends up being the catalyst and tension breaker for a better relationship between Smalls and his stepfather. However, perhaps their most memorable and wry funny venture is when Squints Paladoris, after years of fawning over the lifeguard Wendy Peppercorn, fakes his own drowning just so she'll give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and he can lock lips with her when the time is right. Another relatable coming-of-age moment reflecting that one older girl crush many boys had growing up whom they just couldn't keep their thoughts from or their eyes off. The movie concludes with the narrator slash adult Smalls calling a professional Los Angeles Dodgers baseball game with Benny, the child prodigy among the boys, on the field. They share a moment acknowledging each other, their lasting bond, and the inferred importance of having childhood friends and how it can impact adulthood. Rodriguez's single, simple act of reaching out an empathetic guiding hand to a fellow boy when he needed it most turned into a lifelong friendship and for Smalls was the pathway to a love of and career in baseball.